quest of the night. Um, but thank you so much. Um, let's get started with the word of prayer. And um, I'm going to switch this to gallery. Okay, so let's get started with the word of prayer. And um, then we will begin. God, thank you for this day. Thank you for um, Grand Rapids Christian Athletics. Thank you for your school. Thank you for all of these coaches and all of the families that these coaches will will interact with this fall and make a make an impact on. We just pray that you be with them, uh, give them a, a special measure of grace and patience as they interact, uh, not fully formed middle school brains, as they interact with parents that maybe are more emotional than they should be, coaches on opposing teams that are more emotional than they should be, and with officials who are, you know, not always going to call it our way. You know, we just pray that you um, be with our coaches to set an example that is pleasing to you in all that they do. Um, <clears throat> we're thankful for them, grateful for them, and uh, pr pray that you bless our conversation tonight. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you again for being part of this. Uh, I sent you all this document. Uh, I believe this is a very important document for us to kind of all be on the same page. So you do have that. I'm going to go through some of that today. Um, and then with some of you, like I said, we'll go a little more in depth with a few things afterwards. Um, so uh, I, I just I'm very grateful for our coaches. We have one of the most experienced staffs that we've had in a while for our fall sports. And that's really exciting. I know our kids are going to be well taken care of. I just finished parent meetings with with uh, soccer and volleyball. Uh, and volleyball had almost all of the families represented in the meeting, which I think is really good. Soccer had about half of what I had signed up. Um, so, um, you know, that just, just so you know, I, I will be sending that info out to all the parents that were not there. So a uh, couple of things. First, practice schedule grid. Um, I wanna share uh, the look of this with each of you so that we are, are all familiar with um, with the grid as soon as I can get to it here. I gotta move, there we go. Oops, hold on, I shared the wrong screen. Apologies. But uh, I wanna make sure that we're all familiar with the look of the grid so that um, we all know what we're looking at. So let me share that with you real quick. It's going to be new to some of you. But also you get a first look at um, where your first few practices are. And in that vein, um, we're going to ask people to, um, to be communicating through email um, with people the, um, this weekend, the first time. And so I think you should be able to see the grid now. Is that correct? Okay, so this grid, I wanna do a little bit of translating here, um, but as you can see, we kind of moved through it with um, the dates on the top. So next week, the only thing that we really have going is five to 7 p.m. We have eighth grade volleyball tryouts um, that are happening. So you can see that our, our venues are listed on the left. The dates are listed at the top. Uh, and the time frames are listed on the bottom. And so that's next week. Um, if we if we scroll over a little bit, you all have this shared with you by now. But as you can see, we're going to have a group at Iroquois from 5 to 6.30. That's our fifth grade volleyball group. And then we also have <clears throat> practices listed at the different times. So 6.30 goes until 8.00. 315 goes until 5 and 5 goes until 630. As you know, soccer field is listed here. Jim and um, and Lizzie, I don't have your dates. In, well, I think I, I put these in, but I don't know what you're planning for those first few days. So if you just send me in the chat those first few days that you're going to meet. Uh, again, we want to make sure that we're um, want to make sure that we're walking those kids the first day or two and teaching them the ropes of how to walk correctly. I talked about that in our parent meeting, but if you guys can send me those first three days that you want to do some team formation that week, uh, I would appreciate that to update the calendar. Hey, Kevin, yep. are you aware we don't have school on Friday the 25th? Uh, no. 
we don't have school? That's correct. Do, do we know why that is? Why is that? Uh, it's a new thing that they did this year was starting early. They gave Fridays off before Labor Day weekend. So first week is normal, second week doesn't have Friday, and then the third week is going into Labor Day weekend. Oh, that's bad for us. It just what? might be harder to get people to do five o'clock practice. Well, yeah, we won't we won't be able to do that. We'll have to I'll have to reorganize the first week. So you'll have to check back on this, but I appreciate okay. you letting me know that. We'll have to reorganize this. Um, but thank you for letting me know. Um, yeah, the next week, obviously, we're planning on no Friday that week. <clears throat> but then the first games are going to be on the ninth, typically for everyone, or the Monday or Tuesday after will be your first game. So what I'm going to try to do is have the practice schedule set for you okay. prior to the ninth. And then at some point, we'll get a game schedule in there, which will be loaded into Team Snap. And then you'll have to, as I want everybody to always remember, you'll always check this and translate this into Team Snap. Okay, and that is one of the responsibilities you have to make your team snap page up to date um, uh, with that. So this is the practice grid. Um, if you don't have access to this as a head coach, uh, please send me an email so that I know to make sure to give that to you. But this is a this is a very important part of our soccer and volleyball um, season is to have this up to date. So Jim and Lizzie, I'll need your dates for Evergreen and times. And everybody else uh, that uses our, our soccer field at the middle school, I'll schedule that out. And then also the volleyball teams, I'll schedule that out for you. Um, but I haven't finished doing that yet, but I just wanted you to see that and, and be aware of that. Any questions about the practice schedule grid? Okay, so I'll update that and I'll be in touch. Um, for score reporting, um, make sure you get that to me. Um, that night, if you can, with a text message or even an email <clears throat> is great. Um, the home teams are supposed to report scores. So if we're hosting, we should be reporting the scores. And in case the home team where, where you were playing doesn't, they always ask me the next day if we have the score. So please always send me your score um, after your games are done. Um, just a couple of reminders. Um, that we we want to do things that um, that we can defend as far as like teaching respectful behavior, spending time on spiritual development, making sure that's a big part of it. Um, that we're talking to kids and using opportunities through sport to to relay faith to worldview. Um, we want to play kids. Make sure you get kids out there. Let them make mistakes. Let them screw up. It's part of the process. Um, we want to have strategy to win. Uh, especially down the stretch of things, we want to use strategy, but be smart about how you do playing time and stuff so that you get kids in and let them have some experiences, whether they're they're doing great or whether they're struggling. Let them do it. It's middle school. Um, weekly parent communication is super important. There's no excuse for us to not send that weekly email. We have to send that through TeamSnap on Saturday or Sunday each week, hopefully Saturday, so that parents have time to plan. I know as a uh, a middle school parent, there's a million schedules, whether it's elementary and high school and middle, middle school, it just gets really challenging. So please make sure you're disciplined about like a Saturday, a Saturday email about the upcoming week, spend 30 minutes doing that. It makes a big difference. Other things for you guys, social media, cell phone, professionalism It is important to me that our athletic program has people call you coach Carey or coach Gabridge, um, not carry or something like that. Like I want them to have that delineation of like that, that, that first name of coach so that um, there's a respect there. I think that gets lost a lot. And I think we really need to do that. So please make sure that people call you coach Cole or coach hook or something like that. Not just your first name. Uh, second was social media. Make sure you privatize your accounts and don't friend kids uh, and cell phones. There's no reason to communicate with one of the players that you have on a cell phone, even if they try to give it to you, please don't do that. Communicate with parents and communicate with kids in person, uh, but please don't do it. Don't do it the other way. Substitute coaching is going to happen this year. We have a lot of people. You're all sacrificing something to be part of our coaching staff. And so with substitute coaching, I always like to remind everybody, let's look within our grade level first. 
about like if DeBoer is going to miss something and he has no way out of it and he needs a sub, the first person he's going to ask is Becca and her uh, assistant coach of like, hey, can you cover me on this game day because I have this family event? If we can't do it, then we want to look within another grade level to cover that. Um, and there's reasons for that, but mostly it's because of paperwork and legal issues. Like all of you guys have paperwork to complete so that you're um, safe for the school to have you leading kids. And if we go outside of that, we have to get other paperwork done. It just gets difficult. So if you need to enlist a parent to help you, uh, please let me know as soon as possible so I can get their paperwork done ahead of time so we're not scrambling. But please look within your team for substitute coaching. Also, if you're going to miss, like if DeBoer is going to miss something on the 22nd, I always like to know that because I don't like to be surprised when a parent says, when our coach wasn't even there. And, I, and I'm like, what? Like that, that's not a good thing for me to be surprised about. So if you're going to be gone, let me know. And then let's come up with a solution to get a coach for you on that time. Um, playing time, uh, as you all know, uh, the league does not um, endorse, nor do we endorse equal playing time. Uh, in, in a couple reasons. Number one, the best players should play more uh, because they make every other player better. And so play them more. Um, and, and, and other kids need opportunities with those kids. So I encourage you not to like put the best six volleyball players in set one, the bad six volleyball players in set two, and then the good six in set one again, like some of the Catholic schools will do. Mix the kids together, um, do substitutions. And if it comes down at the end, you need to sub to get a good server in or something like that, certainly do that to try to get a win. But please make sure that we're, we're, Playing kids the minimum, which in volleyball is 14 points out of the entire three sets. And in soccer, I believe it's 30 minutes of play time. Is that correct? 20 minutes, 20 minutes of playing time out of the 60 minutes. So please make sure we beat those uh, and play the kids, but it doesn't have to be equal. And no parent should ever say that Mr. Bruni said it should be equal. That's not, that's a lie. And you know that, okay? Um, so please make sure that um, if you have problems with parents with that kind of thing, let me let me know. Um, a parent meeting is still required by you to do. I encourage you to do it either after or before a, a, a practice where people are coming to you or to do it by Zoom, um, just like we're doing so that people can do it at home and they have busy lives and you can do it that way. And you can also record it and send it to people that miss it or whatever. But I, you need to do a parent meeting. I sent you a paper about things that you should cover in a parent Zoom. Many of you are super experienced with this, so you don't need my paper, but um, please make sure you cover a variety of those things. You have that sheet in the email I sent you. Um, game schedules, like I said, will be coming out later. Um, the league is hoping to do seventh and eighth grade things on Tuesdays, I'm sorry, Mondays and Wednesdays, and then fifth and sixth grade things on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And then also Saturday, of course, but you'll get like Monday or Wednesday and then Saturday or Monday, Wednesday, but no Saturday. You know what I mean? Like they're trying to schedule it. So it's a little bit more plan, planable for us, uh, which is which is really nice. So uh, we, we hope to that they'll be able to fulfill that uh, that wish so we can plan on it a little bit better. Um, practice schedule, as I said, you're going to be responsible for using the practice schedule grid to fill that into Team Snap. You all have been invited to Team Snap already. So did you guys get that in your email? Like at least head coaches have, um, and then accepted that invite. Did everybody do that? Like give me a thumbs up if you were able to, to get that. Okay, um, if you didn't, send me an email and I'll make sure that we, that we take care of that. Um, issues with the league or another school. Uh, this is a reminder I always wanna give to you. Um, we do run into other schools doing weird things. Um, Jim has some fantastic stories, even from last year, uh, about things that occurred with, with even our other Christian schools. But um, things will happen. Um, the way that I want us to handle that is that if you have a problem with another school or something like that, that you report it to me. Please don't approach another coach. Don't tell a coach that they're bad or that they did something wrong, or confront them. Uh, just talk with me. It's my role to then take that to the league. The league wants us to have a, a, a good system of where we're not creating 
arguments among schools, um, but that we go to to them to help manage those sorts of of things. If somebody in volleyball last year didn't play all their kids the right amount of serves, right? Like that happened and then teams won because of that and other teams lost. That is not like a confrontation we want you to have in the moment. That's a confrontation we want you to tell me about. And then I will relay that to the league and the league will manage the discipline of that. So we just want to get away from like confrontational things. Talk to me and my role is to, to lobby on your behalf to work with the league. And so when there are issues with that, um, you know, please make sure that you do it that way. We've had some weird things happen with some of these schools, and uh, I just want to make sure that we're doing it in a way that that we're supposed to. Um, if you have an issue with an official, uh, number one, don't, because they're not going to be very good. Uh, and two, um, in the end, it really doesn't matter that much. Um, so don't have an issue with an official. Please thank the official. Be kind to the official. You can certainly ask questions of an official. Don't be like the annoying question asker. Like, are you seriously going to call that? That's not the kind of question I'm talking about. Um, I'm talking about kind questions. Like, could you explain to me why this happened or, or why I don't understand this rule? Can you tell me about this rule? Those are things to do. And they're also not yelling at someone. So you certainly can have conversations. And I think that's part of coaching. But certainly just remember, if we start being the ones that are always questioning and yelling at officials, our parents are definitely going to follow and so are our kids. And that's not anything that we're interested in. Uh, so please make sure that you're approaching officials well. And please, when you wear your, your shirt, whether you wear it or not, at the end of the game, please thank the official. Please tell them thank you for being a part of this. We've had to cancel games because we don't have officials. And uh, it says a lot about our school, about how we do sportsmanship and about Christ when we do a good job of, of always thanking um, the officials for the work that they're doing. We need them and they have a very thankless job. You think coaching is thankless, think of being an official. Okay. It's way, it's way harder to be an official. They don't, they don't, they don't get a lot of love. So give them a little love um, if you can. Uniforms, we'll do that at your practices or I'll work it out with you to find a way to do that. So don't worry about that. Transportation, remember, if you're a parent, you can get away with taking kids to or from an event, but if you're not a parent, uh, it's just an easy, no, I can't take your kid. No, I can't bring your kid home, I'm not allowed to. If you're having trouble with transportation, please let me know. Um, <clears throat> when you talk to parents, I reminded them in the meetings, but they're not to sit in the gym and watch practice. That's not, that's not part of it. Um, it's awkward for everyone when they do that. This is middle school now, so they just, just don't do that. Um, if, so just tell them, like, we just remind them, like, it's a drop off, just drop your kid off, we'll have them out on time. So start and end your practices on time uh, to honor parents, and then they're not hanging around wondering why you're always staying too late, and then they're trying to get in your business, just start and end practice on time, and uh, we'll just remind the parents to just drop off and pick up. But you also need to stay until the kids are picked up, okay? That's a big thing, is if you have to go... I understand that, but we have to make sure that there's an adult with a kid until they're picked up. Um, and so sometimes that can be like, if you have the five o'clock practice and you're done at 6.30 and you gotta leave and there's another practice after you, that's okay. If you're the last practice or if you're at the Iroquois gym and somebody's not there, you need to stay with them. We don't really have a defense for, I left your kid alone and they're a minor who's a middle schooler and something bad happened to them, you know? So we, we got to stay there until all the kids are picked up and, and stay there with them in public places. So it's really simple, um, but make sure that you're doing that. And if you're having trouble with a parent always being late, let me know, you know, communicate to the parent and just say, Hey, you know, I really would appreciate if you could pick up your son or daughter on time. Let me know if you're having trouble. And if there's a problem, let me know and I'll try to help. Um, but we got to make sure that we're we're watching kids. Um, what am what am I missing? Can anyone think of something that I'm missing that I typically say in this meeting? I know there's one thing I have to mention, which is the the league, uh, the diocese has started a virtues program, uh, like a Christian virtues program that they. Um, they're gonna send out to you and all of the parents every Sunday. So it's gonna be like each week, there's a focus on a different virtue. 
which is great. It's a Christian virtue. It's like the Pope's certain virtue. Um, but it's, it's going to be good. They're going to have questions that go with it. They're going to have ways to talk about it. And it's going to go to parents and it's going to go to you. So it's a way to do spiritual development pretty easily. You can take those virtues and talk about them or have kids talk about them. It's a five, 10 minute conversation once a week, but that will be fed to your email, uh, which is great. So you'll have that extra resource uh, that they're willing to do this year. So I don't require you to talk about it. I do ask you and require you to have conversations around spiritual development. So this maybe is an easy way to, to kickstart that. Um, but that's kind of the, the couple of things that I wanted to make sure everybody everybody knew. Official communication or initial communication, um, Tiffany and Kristen, uh, you guys are the eighth grade head coaches. Um, it'd be great if, if um, Tiffany could send out an, uh, an email to that list. You know, I gave you like the roster list. If you could send an email to your, all the eighth graders trying out for eighth grade A and B team and uh, just let them know of the tryout dates and times and what to expect on those three days at the middle school for that initial communication this weekend. Uh, for seventh grade volleyball, um, I'm going to enlist Mr. Hirma to do that uh, on behalf of all the seventh grade coaches. Um, <clears throat> and and uh, so he's going to do that. For sixth grade, um, Allie, if you'd be willing to do it, I think Allie was in this meeting with us. Yep, there she is. Um, if you could do that, you know, you've done that a couple of times before. If you could, if you could write that on behalf of all the sixth grade emails, that would be great. And then Steve, if you'd be willing to do it for fifth grade, I'm sure you got that thing copy and pasted somewhere that you can make a couple adjustments and, and have it ready, but you do a great job with that. Uh, obviously for soccer, Jim and Lizzie, you guys write one. Um, and then um, I would like to have Lindy write it for the five, six soccer people. Um, Lindy's written a handful of those and does a great job with that information. So um, if you guys could all send those out, I would love the first communication for all of those to go out this weekend. I know that some of you aren't starting until the 21st, but um, it gives them a week to get ready. And with all of the things that are back to school, everything right now, that extra week to plan on is super helpful for people. So I'd love everybody to send that out. If you can please put me on there um, so that I, that I know it went out, but also I see the information. That would be great. Um, and uh, eventually we'll get everything on Team Snap, but until then, you're just gonna have to use your email until we have teams set. Um, the last thing I'm gonna say is that um, with Team Snap stuff, I'll be sending you like a couple of emails of like, hey, once you've got your team done, you can upload. Here's the sheet on how to upload your team onto your page. Before you do that, I want you to put your practices in until the first game, because the first thing that parents do when you they get loaded on is they click schedule. So if you want to like build trust right off the bat, put your schedule in for practices between now and the ninth, and then add your parents after tryouts are done, then add your parents and invite them. Does that make sense? Like I'm going to send that out. So I don't want you to be surprised with that, but that's the best way to do it. So that parents feel like you are on top of things and know what you're doing. So schedule first, use the, use the grid. Um, just go to your team snap page and put those practices in, even though no one will be getting them yet, just have them in there ready. And then once you've done that, then invite your team after your team formation is done. And that's so you're saying, but start working on that now. Well, yeah, I, I mean, I would put your practices in if you can. I'll I'll finish the grid maybe tomorrow morning by like nine o'clock. Okay. And then you can put that in, you know, whether it's this this uh, this week or next week. But before we, you know, put a roster on there, I want to have those practices in. Does that make sense? Just so that it's ready to go when people. You're just gonna tell us when the schedule is finalized, and then we can yep. do it. Okay. Yep. Yep. I'll do that. Um, and then I'll also send out that paper that always tells you how to upload your team roster in. So it's easy to do that. Okay. But I just, just want to give you a heads up on that, um, that I'll be sending those things your way. Uh, I think everybody's done paperwork, which is great. 
Um, and that's all, that's all I have. Is there any questions anybody has some that, um, returning people that I, that I missed? I have one volleyball specific question, but since I have you here, okay. um, I noticed there's, I feel like there's not as many trying out for eighth grade this year. So you, is it just two teams mm -hmm. and it's an A and a B? A and a B. Yep. Oh, okay. Yep. Just two teams. I think we only have 22 or 23 people trying out. Yep. So it's okay. going to be two teams. And you guys can split that 11 and 13 or, you know, 10 and 13 or whatever the cutoff is that works best for you in that process. You guys can manage that. It doesn't okay. have to be 12 and 12 or 11 and 11. It can, you know, it can be yeah. want, as long as you keep at least 10 A teamers, you know. Okay. Okay. Good question. Seventh grade volleyball has three teams. Um, seventh grade, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna lean towards one A and two Bs in seventh grade. Um, we're seeing that happen a little bit more, and so uh, I think we're gonna lean towards one A and two Bs. But I'm gonna look for after the first day if you think that's a good way to do it, or if we just have a ton of really great players that we need two As and one B. But I think we're gonna try to aim for. 1A and 2Bs in seventh grade. Sixth grade's equal split, and so is fifth. So um, that's that's the way that goes. Jim, you're going to do it with schedules again, as usual? Uh, yeah, we'll see. I mean, we have a lot of kids, so I don't think we're worried about, worried about having everybody sh or a, a team show up. So okay. whatever you prefer, however you want us to do it. Yeah, you you guys know how you like to do it once you see everything. And then in fifth, sixth grade soccer, we've got some kids from Rockford Christian. So all those kids are going to be on the same team. And that team will be coached by Joey Deemer, who's not here tonight. Um, but he's going to coach that team. And, and, and he's going to take all of those Rockford kids. So then what we have to do in five, six soccer is make sure that we split the GRC kids we don't know how good the Rockford kids are, but they're all going to be on the same team. So then we got to, it's just going to be a little challenging to split those other kids to make sure it works out equally. But I know you guys can do a good job with that. So. Anything else? Okay, returning coaches, I appreciate you. Uh, send, me, send me questions that you have. We've got a little time here. Uh, send me questions. Tiffany and Kristen and, and Carrie, thank you so much. Um, and, and Abby. I uh, I will make sure that we have some volleyballs pumped up and ready. You won't have to do that, but you will need to do nets on those three days. And you can leave the nets up the whole time if you're still in here. So, okay? Okay. Uh, for those three days. And I'll make sure that you have uh, volleyballs pumped up and ready to go. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Uh, people that are, that are newer, you can stay on. Um, and people that are returners may go. Okay. All right. Well, let's all introduce who you are. Uh, let's start with Emma. Go ahead and tell them who you are and uh, what's going on, what grade you're coaching, that sort of thing. Um, okay. So my name's Emma. Um, I am going to be a senior at the high school um, this year. I am kind of last minute helping assistant coaching uh, sixth grade volleyball. So I think I'm going to be doing it with Allie. Um, so yeah, it's kind of, yeah, I think Allie stepped out cause she's a, she, she, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, Becca, it says Rebecca, but uh, you sign it Becca. Do you prefer Rebecca or Becca? Uh, Becca is fine. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I am a parent of a fifth grade volleyball player. And so I played in high school, but I haven't coached. So this is going to be an adventure, but, um, yeah, I'm excited to try. So you're going to do great. <laughs> um, how about Kim? Kim Bolt. Uh, I will be working with Vanessa on the sixth grade team. I have a sixth grader myself. I played in high school and I coached middle school volleyball uh, 20 years ago when there was no libero. So that's how old <laughs> the sport is for me. Got it. Got it. a lot of experience there. We're glad you can partner with Vanessa. Vanessa, why don't you introduce yourself? 
Oh, you're okay. Hi. Okay. Vanessa Marble, and um, this is my first time coaching volleyball. Um, I played volleyball in high school way back in the day, so it's going to be exciting. Um, I have a middle schooler um, boy. He's in fifth grade, so I'll be coaching sixth grade, and um, I have a busy schedule, but I'm up for it. I'm also the new dean of students at the high school, so I'm looking forward to just building community and just having fun this year. Well, you're going to like to to meet Emma. Emma's one of our one of our favorite students. I hear, yeah. Okay. Uh, you'll yeah. see a lot of her, I'm sure, around the the gym, but also around school. She's involved in pretty much every group that we have at our school. So <laughs> we're, we're actually quite lucky to have Emma's time uh, with all the things she's involved in. Um, awesome. How about uh, Riley? Um. Hi, I'm Riley. Um. I have played volleyball all throughout high school and then I played at Cornerstone in college and I just graduated this May. So I just finished up my career and I've coached at MVA. I've coached club teams and stuff. So, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. We're really excited to, to have, to have Riley join us. Uh, Emily. Hi, my name is Emily. I am assistant coaching for Becca and my daughter is playing volleyball for the fifth grade team as well. And I have a stepdaughter that plays at MVA and is on a high school team too. Okay, very good. Very good. And then uh, Josh. All right. I, I'm working with a five, six soccer team. So I coach some club soccer and high school soccer in the area and um, we had to add a third team, I think is what happened. And so I'm uh, going to help out. Yeah, Josh, great, glad to have you. Thanks a lot. Um, thanks to all of you. Um, I want to go back through this agenda a little bit, um, revisit some things that we didn't talk about, just to make sure we all have a good frame of mind around, around how to do this. I think one thing that's great is that all of you have coaches that have coached at your grade level before uh, on your grade level coaching team. So there is experience in every single grade level. Um, you know, fifth grade, you've got a guy who's coached middle school volleyball for decades uh, and does a fantastic job, Mr. DeBoer. Uh, sixth grade, Allie has done a great job for us. She coached at all at three levels last year, and she coached a high school team uh, in a different sport. So she's done a ton in sixth grade. Um, in seventh grade, we've got the, the Nolan and Cole who have coached for four or five years, and Jason, our athletic director here at the high school, who's coached for four or five years in multiple sports. So seventh grade, Riley, you're well taken care of with people who have done this middle school thing at our school before. I uh, use these people as resources. Um, and so, yes, and Josh, obviously in five, six, you coached that age a million times, uh, but you do have, you know, two coaches there that have coached a lot of five, six soccer for us too. So, um, you know, you, you guys are all well taken care of. A couple of things. First, I want to go back to the practice schedule grid. Is everybody good with how that looks, how it works? Do you have questions about it? One thing I will talk to you about, and I'm going to show you this real quick, if I can find it again, is um, your, so what will happen when we go forward here is like, for example, it'll look like this. And I might have like um, Becca down here and I might have um, Miller um, and I might have um, Marble down here. And these will be bolded. So what this means for me for the code is like you have a game on Monday the 11th that's not at our facility. But that tells me that's one day that's your meeting that week. Because remember those minimum meeting requirements that we have? It's how I keep track, right? Of how many days I've got you scheduled for. If it says in here, like if these are, sometimes it'll look like this. And these will be blue. Like that. And it will say like um, Becca. And it will say um, Marble. In here, that means that you have a 6 p.m. game that night, and that game is at home. That's why it's blue in our gym, and that's why these are blocked out because we can't practice. Oops, we can't practice in these two slots because we have games. 
So that's kind of kind of what you'll run into with this. And then what I'll see here is that I have Marble and Becca already with two. So that means somewhere in Thursday, Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday, your name should show up one more time because you guys are fifth and sixth grade. Does that make sense? So I'm trying to fit, your name should appear each week three times for the majority of you. Riley, yours should appear four times, whether that's at an away game, a home game, or a practice slot. Does that make sense? Vanessa, you're looking at me crazy. <laughs> Are you good? <laughs> you good? Does that make sense for you? I will be. I'm just processing it. Yeah. So um, it it will it will make sense right now. Everything is like, yeah, but awesome. it will make sense. I'm just processing and it now. You'll see your name on here. I think you said you needed like Monday. What was it? Monday. Tuesday. Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday. That's those are good days. That's when my son is doing his football thing. Right. So like yeah. what I would try to do then if you have a game Monday, a game two, this is not going to happen. But let's say you had that, I would try to put you for that Thursday for your practice. Got it. You get okay. three days. Does that make sense? You know, so yes. I try to work with the things you guys have told me about your practice schedules, but you should see your name three times or four times, depending on your grade level in this grid somewhere. Okay. Um, so I just wanted to make sure I went back to that because people, I always forget to do that. And then people are like, what is the names underneath? And so anyway, that's, that's that. Any questions about practice? Okay. Um, on your sheet, you may have seen winning in middle school philosophy. Um, in middle school, adults want to win a lot. Kids really just want to belong and they don't want to get embarrassed. Um, they just want to feel like they're part of something. Um, there's always two or three kids on your team that are diehard athletes, but the majority of them aren't. They're just trying to play because Jenny's playing or because Frank is playing and they want to play. Um, and they just don't want to be exposed, you know? So just remember like, Kids quit sports because coaches and parents get too intense. Um, they want to win too much. Um, and, and kids enjoy sport, especially at the middle school, because they have fun. Make sure you have fun. Smile. Do funny stuff. Do funny things with them. Bring treats. Do stuff that just, like, really makes them know what it's like to be part of a team. You know, that they're safe somewhere. They're already on display. Um, volleyball players are on display and sometimes shorts that they don't like jerseys that are too tight in front of parents that are too excited about volleyball. And it's a really tough situation. Uh, it's a little bit better in soccer because it's just not as much on top of you. But man, just, just try to love those kids. Remember that winning is, is important. We want to win. But I really think the sweet spot is if we go five and three. That's great because that means we had some challenges. That means we won a little bit. If we can go four and four, five and three regular season and make a little run in the playoffs, that's a, that's a taste of good and enough losing to, to, to give you a chance to teach them real well. Uh, and so, again, if you can be better than that, that's great. But that's, that's our goal, if we can get better uh, and we can make those kids feel welcome. With club sports and middle school sports or dual sport athletes, my view uh, is that it's okay for kids to do a bunch of stuff in middle school. Uh, I'm not going to be the school that says you have to do everything for our team. There's going to be no rule on your team. It's like if you miss practice – then you can't play the next day or something like that. If people ask people to communicate with you, but, but, but remember these are fifth through eighth graders that are trying to figure out what they're good at and what they like. Some of them are playing volleyball, not because they want to play volleyball in high school because it's the last time they get to play volleyball. Right. And they're on a soccer team that they're a sweet soccer player and they're on a club soccer team and they're going to miss a volleyball thing. Okay. We want, like I tell the parents, we want to split the conflict. So when you put your schedule out and the practice schedule we put out, parents are like, hey, I got a conflict on these four days. What I told all the parents is that we want to split those days with them. We don't want to say you have to do all ours or you can miss all of ours. That's not what we're trying to do. We want to split them. So you pick two that work for your club and you pick two that work for us. Um, but that is, that is what I tell all the parents. And that is what I want you guys to know when those conflicts come your way is try to get them to split the conflicts as best they can. If they can go to a club game and miss a practice, encourage that, right? If they can go to our game and miss a club practice, encourage that. If it's a game in a game, um, we want them to split those, right? Like do one with them, one with us. So 
with conflicts with clubs, we're, we're not going to draw this hard line in the sand, but we are going to draw a firm line that we want them to try to split those. And we definitely want them to communicate with us. Does that make sense to everybody? Um, so, okay. The other thing, middle school coaching, uh, I have in there like team building. Um, anytime that you can, can do a little thing, it's not required by me, but if you can do like cupcake night or, you know, everybody brings a treat one time and then you sit together and watch a game or something, or if you can come up with anything or you're going to go watch a volleyball game together at the high school, um, you know, or a soccer game at the high school, you want to bring the team out and everybody wears their jersey and goes to the game. Those things are the things the kids remember the most, you know, and so if you can provide something like that. Uh, it doesn't have to break the bank. If it's a high school thing, you can usually, I can usually help you out by getting your team in that night or something like that. But that's the stuff kids really remember. Uh, they're not going to remember that you made a great substitution to win the second game against IHM, you know, but they are going to remember, you know, going to the game together. And we had one coach who made volleyball like bingo, where it was like spike, set, dig like you had to find those things happening and if you could make bingo out of it by watching the game together like it was super creative but you know do if you can do a thing that's great um i think it, i think it always makes a difference for kids to enjoy the season a lot um on the on the back side of this page i had something about parent meeting um and then i ask everybody to do um a, a parent meeting and so i did share with you um I did share with you, wait, I shared the wrong screen, I think. No, I didn't, here we go. So like parent meeting hints. Some of you have done parent meetings before, but this is stuff that I think you need to cover. So if it's in if it's in gray, um, you need to cover that. You can blame some of them on me, like, like the stuff about how to communicate with officials or other people. You can say, Kevin told me to say this to you, this is how we need to do it. Fan behavior, Kevin told me to say this to you, this is how we need to do it. Right. Like you can blame it on me, but, but these are things that like you want to make sure you communicate because people will ask about these things or they'll misbehave these things. And so we always try to cover those things. Uh, and in here is like playing time. Right. Like what's your philosophy of playing time? Please don't tell people we're going to play everybody the same. OK, that's not what we believe. But tell them how how you're going to do it so they're not surprised. You know, approach that issue. And that's up to you. This isn't what you have to say. This is to help you develop how you're going to talk to parents about it. Um, you know, explain rules to your sport that are unique. Volleyball, if you're going to do libero, make sure you talk to people about what that is so that they understand it. Um, and then also ask for volunteers. People want to help. Some parents need to do a thing. So if you can say, hey, volleyball, you we always have to have a line judge. Do I have anybody that's interested in being line judge? Um, soccer, if you have people that want to bring snacks or something like that, let them organize it with the team, give parents stuff to do if you can and offer them that opportunity. Um, so this is just stuff for you to look at. Keep it short. You can do it on zoom or you can do it in person. As I said, it's all up to you. Any questions about a parent meeting? And people in here that are parents, you know what you want to hear, <laughs> right? Like, you know, exactly what you want to hear from the coach about what's going to happen. So make sure you hit those points. Team formation, we take this very seriously. Um, I want you all to take it very seriously as well, along with our veteran coaches. But getting this right the first two or three days is the best way to have a good season. Um, so really make sure that you're giving kids an opportunity to show what they have uh, through drill work for how they listen, how they pay attention, how good they are, and split them up the best way you can for your grade level because. Um, if you do a good job with that, it's just going to pay dividends all year. Um, and so, and also we, we need to be diligent. Like we need people to trust uh, in how we do this. And so as the first people of the year, you guys have a you know, pretty big responsibility for like, you're setting a precedent with all these families, their first experience with sports this year. Do we do a good job taking this seriously? If you do, they'll believe us when we say it in basketball and they'll believe us when we say it in baseball and softball and the other soccer and that sort of thing. So uh, please make sure that you, you take that very seriously and work together. Um, team snap is always, a, is there somebody in here who's never used team snap before? I, I've used it on the parent side, but not in the coaching side. 
Okay, not on the coach side. Okay. Yeah. I'm just going to walk through something real quick, the basic thing. So what I asked everybody to do was once, once you have your page, which you all should have this page, you click schedule. Okay. You're going to open up my, um, my grid, right. That I give you, and then you're going to do schedule your first event. And what you're going to do is write in practice. And then you're going to put the date in, right, which will be probably for this group, it's going to be something like the 28th. And then the time of day that I put, whether it's 315 or, or five o'clock for soccer, I think this is soccer. So five o'clock, you're going to put in 5 p.m. on the 28th. And the location um, is Grand Rapids Christian, uh, Rosewood, right? That's where we are. Um, and then, you know, you can put in here, like, behind the gym if you want to. This is like a little note that you can do. The event info here, you're going to do durations. So you're just going to do one hour and 30 minutes on there so that it has a start and end time. Um, and then all you got to do is hit save or save and add another. And you just go through the list and add those in. Um, and so that's, that's how you build practices. The games will automatically go in. So you don't have to worry about that, but that's how you put practices in. The other thing that I always like to show people is like the message function. This is how you're going to email people. So you'll do your roster and I'll send you an info sheet about how to upload your roster. But once you have that, you're just going to do a new email, type it in just like normal. Here's your subject. Here's all your information. And then at the end, you know, it'll say um, all the names of the kids on your team and you just push select all and it sends it to all the phones all of the emails and everybody gets the information. So it's a really easy way to make sure everybody gets the info. And so you should do your messaging through Team Snap on, um, <clears throat> on Saturdays for that. If you need to send messages during the week, of course, don't hesitate to do that. Uh, but you can use this uh, to do that. And it's a very good way to communicate. And once you put things in the schedule, it sends reminders. So this is a great thing to do. We do this in our high school too now. So you guys doing it for our middle school people really trains them well uh, for how to handle it. And the roster page, you're going to just do add a roster and then you're going to import from a file and I'll send you a paper on how to import from a file. So that'll be really easy when you decide to do that. Any questions about TeamSnap? Okay, game day assistance is something that uh, we have to talk about. So like if you're a volleyball coach, um, when you have games at Grandma's Christian Middle School, you you may be asked to help set up chairs and tables. You may be asked to, you know, grab uh, flags to be like a lines judge. You may be asked to put chairs away. Um, and so what I want you to think about is like as a volleyball team at our school, if you're the second game of the night or the last game of a Saturday, plan on your team helping pick up chairs. OK, if you're the first team and you're having the kids show up early, don't be surprised if you guys get there 30 minutes early and we need a little help setting up chairs. You know, when everybody grabs a chair, it goes real quick. So just be willing to help us out with that. Um, as far as soccer is concerned, um, soccer, has, you'll have a key to our, our little garage at the field. And on game days, the first team of the day will put the flags out and move the benches into place. And the last team of the day will put the flags back in. Uh, into the into the garage and then lock the garage so it's pretty simple but we just ask for a little bit of assistance from you guys um, to do that and it says exactly what you have to do on the sheet there uh, but you you probably be asked to do those things as far as like equipment so josh um, you're going to get a bag of soccer balls from us with some cones and some jerseys in it you'll pick that up at school um, and that, that's stored in our middle school so you'll get that you can throw it in your trunk if you want, if that's the best way to do it or in your back seat. Um, you can just keep that with you the whole time into the season, you bring it back. Um, for volleyball, all of our equipment is at the venues. You do not bring volleyballs or soccer balls to, um, like you bring soccer balls for warmups of games, but volleyball, you do not bring any of our volleyballs to another gym. Um, fifth and sixth graders use a volley light ball that will be stored in the concession stand at the middle school. You'll have a key for that. Okay, so that little concession stand right at the bottom of the stairs. We put all of our volley light volleyballs in there. They're in rolling racks. That's where you'll get them. You'll put them in and out of there. Um, and then the, the, the main volleyballs are stored in the end storage room. 
Um, but, but those things you have to put away at the end of the night. If you're the last practice of the night, um, if you're the last soccer practice, make sure that everything's locked up around you, but just help us with some of those things. Um, don't expect, it's not like the high school where we have a bunch of night custodians running around to make sure everything's taken care of. We don't have that at the middle school. So we've got to do a little extra help with that. Does anybody have a question about like a storage area or equipment? So is that the same at Iroquois? Right. They so will... at Iroquois, what will happen is the custodial staff there will unlock a storage room for you. Okay. And in that storage room are your nets. So your poles and nets come out. Um, and then your your rack of volley balls, volley light balls is in there too. Okay. So so you you'll just put those in and out. So okay. don't, you know, if you're the first practice of the day in volleyball, you usually have to set up nets. If you're the last practice of the day, you got to take them down. Generally, when we're at Iroquois, are we the only one practicing there? Or are yeah. there others after us? No. We'll be the, we'll only, be the only one. one. So we'll be setting up and taking down. You get the joy of set up and take down, but you also have no <laughs> interference. No right. No interference. That's true. <laughs> you get to yourself. So, okay. uh, so, you know, so it kind of, it goes both ways there, but. Um, yeah, if you're a first practice, expect to set stuff up, teach your kids. And if you're the last practice, make sure the kids help you take everything down so that they know how to do that too. Uh, it's important that they put things away and they know where to put stuff. So, okay. Any other questions about storage areas or equipment? Um, any questions about how to handle disputes with schools or officials? You're going to see some really weird coaches do some really weird stuff don't do what they do okay <laughs> don't do what they do if you have a problem with officials or getting a fight with another team that's a problem for me like i just we can't sink to those levels we have to put christ on display better than that so just it is what it is don't give kids excuses tell me about it we'll work on it from the way that we're asked to Uniforms for each of you, we'll work that out either between me and you, or I'll have the kids come in and grab them from me. Depends on what works best for our program. Um, and then working with me. So just the best way to work with me. Uh, Vanessa, do you have a question? Um, yeah, but I had raised it a while ago. I can, I can ask the question when you're done with your flow. Oh, okay. Last thing, working with me. If you have like a quick question for me, uh, just send me a text. If it's something that I can like work on, like it's like a, a bigger thing, like I need these things changed in my schedule or I have this conflict, send me an email because that's like a to-do list for me on my work day that stays in there. If you send me a text about an important thing like that, it could get lost down the chain of texts that I get during a day. So if it's like an important thing, send it to my email. That's like a to-do list and like a, I definitely will see that kind of thing. And if you have an emergency of some kind, you need to like call me, like something bad is happening or like I have to know something right now or it's just not going to be good. Call me and I'll make sure that I pick it up or I'll call you back very shortly after. Um, but, you know, it's not good for me to constantly be answering phone calls about like, well, hey, what time was practice again? You know, or something like that. So I just have way too many teams and coaches to, to manage. So that's kind of the best way to work with me is send me texts for quick things. Uh, an email for something that's like a, a thing I need to work on. And if you have some kind of emergency or urgent issue, give me a, give me a call. That's all I got. Vanessa, what do you got? So, um, yeah, my screen, I can't show my video cause it's, it's, um, it's frozen, but, um, for team formation mm -hmm. that week for practice, can you explain a little bit more about that? I saw the roster, um, where there's once on one spreadsheet, has a list of all the players and then the other, I think black or white, I'm not sure um, which team, it's empty. So my, assum my, my assumption is that, that the coaches will get together and during team formation, that's when we form our teams. Is that, how, how does that look? Yeah. No, that's a good question for me to clarify. So like all of you coaches in sixth grade, and there's a handful of you, you know, with you, Emma, Allie, um, who else is in there? Beth, you have four or five coaches in sixth grade. <laughs> You'll run uh, the practices together. So you may decide like, 
each of you is going to take 30 minutes of practice, or I'm going to take serving section. We're going to do this or, you know, whatever. You guys are going to have to work together a little bit on how to run those first three practices. But the goal is that you get a good read on all the kids so that by the end of, you know, the second night, you're starting to talk about, okay, you know, who are the top kids? Who are the bottom kids? Who are the ones that are kind of in the middle? And start thinking about how you would split those kids. And then the last day, um, obviously, you will, uh, you'll have, you'll meet with the coaches after practice and finalize those teams. Try, you know, you can do a draft style, you can do it um, however you want to do it, but you want to make sure we get them as even as possible. And then what I'll do is I'll send an email just to remind everybody kind of on Wednesday of that week, like when you send your rosters out of team formation, it's always good to send them at basically the same time. Uh, so middle school kids with text messaging and all that stuff, news gets out quick. So if you're like, hey, let's all send it at 830 tonight, um, you send you know the email to your roster welcoming kids to your roster um, on you know like a certain time that all you coaches agree on that last night after team formation is done um, and then you know um, after that you'll kind of say like hey I'll, I'll I'm going to load all of you on the team snap and you'll get an invite for that and then just join the team snap so does that help answer the question Vanessa does is that does that help you guys just have to communicate about who's running practice for, you know the first couple of days Yes, that 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 helps um, a lot. And um, how your coaches typically communicate is that like, do we just do a group text where we're all um, communicating that way? Email. Um, and I don't know. You could have sent this out. Do you have? Is there a roster of all the coaches and our our numbers already together? Um, and that could be on that that sheet. Sorry if I didn't look yet, but um. I'm gonna. What I'll do um, tonight is I'll send an email to each grade level grouping of coaches so that you're all connected through email. Tonight. Okay, thank you. Sounds now that you guys can start your conversations uh, with plenty of time to spare. And, and don't be afraid like for Allie to run the first practice. Like Allie has coached sixth grade before. She's done volleyball before. Um, not that anybody else hasn't, but you're super busy, Vanessa. Emma's new to coaching, right? Like if Allie wants to run the first practice and then you guys split it up different the next two days, don't be afraid to do that, you know, but I'll email everybody's coaching team like, hey, here's all of your emails, share out your contact information, is, you know, so that you all can connect. That's a good reminder for me. Thank you. Anyone else? Hey, Kevin, I want to circle back to something you said in the earlier meeting, um, just okay. making sure about safety and coaches. Mm -hmm. um, as both a parent and a coach and living in a popular neighborhood, like, are you okay if, you know, Becca and I and Emily and others, if we transport kids that we would normally transport to and from practices and games, you know, I get why Riley and Emma wouldn't be um, an obvious choice, but if we're playing both the role of a parent and a coach, are you comfortable with us transporting yeah, can, other kids? If you can wear the parent hat, that's defensible, right? Like you can easily do that. You're a parent. You would normally take kids. You can do that. Okay. But you know, like, Josh is not, so we don't want Josh to take people, right? It's just it's just one way to like reduce any anything, you know. So yeah, so that's that's great. If you're a parent in that grade and you can take kids, that's fine. And you want to help people out. Carpooling is the key to making athletics work for the next eight years, right? So um, please do that when you can. Um, and that's if you can wear both hats. Yep. Good questions. I have another question. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. um, so you said for clarification, Allie is going to send an email out mm -hmm. for first communication. Yep. Okay. She's going to send the first email to that big list. That big list. Okay. Got it. So she knows what goes in the first email, right? It's like, okay. here's who the coaches are. And in my email to you guys, I'm going to say, Hey, remember to give Allie your little bio so she can introduce you. And then she'll give a schedule and then she'll tell you what to expect, you know? Um, so I'll send those reminders in the email that I send to connect all you coaches together because, you know, she kind of knows how to write that first email. Um, so, yeah, so she'll take care of that. And then I would encourage you to just say, hey, would you be willing, Allie, to, to plan the first, first practice? Okay. You know, that would be a good way to do it. And then you guys can kind of work from there. 
Thank you. Mm -hmm. Good questions. Anything else? Riley, you got any questions or is this all just easy money for you? No problem. Um, I don't know. I, well, I have a question, but it's just about like my schedule. So okay. that can, if you, you can want. Wait. Yep. Okay. Yep. Anybody else? All right, well, we, we appreciate you. Hopefully you guys get a feeling for how intentionally we try to do athletics at the middle school. Um, we certainly don't roll out coaches and say, hey, go get it done. We're trying to do things together in a system so that parents have like a solid offering and understanding of how we do athletics. Um, and so I appreciate you taking the time to kind of talk about this. Let me clarify anything for you that you need. But hopefully the biggest thing you take from this is that you have some good information on how to get started. You know how to be successful and you can see that like what we're trying to do is provide a system of athletics for our families uh, that centers around, you know, um, putting Christ on display in a very positive way for our parents, but also the people that we come in contact with. Um, that's, that's really what is most important to me. And if we can win while we do it, yeah, it's a nice bonus. So um, let me know how I can help you. And, um, and you know, other than that, I'll look, I'll look forward to seeing you soon around the gym or around the field. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, do you want me to just ask my question now? Sure. <laughs> um, I think I mentioned it earlier when we had talked, but I work until 5.30 on Wednesdays. Okay. So for practices, if we do have practices on Wednesdays, it would have to be the later time, otherwise a different day. Yeah. Okay, I'll make that adjustment if I, if I mess that up. Let me write that in my notes a minute. Perfect, thank you. Anything else? Not for me. <laughs> Okay, thanks, Riley. Well, let me know what you need. Um, like I said, the biggest thing for you, you'll meet the two here. Most Cole Hook was on earlier. He's going to help. But my goal is that we have one A team in seventh grade and two B teams that split equal. Sounds good. So that means that, you know, you're going to work with them. I'm going to talk to Jason. He's right behind me. He's at a booster meeting right now, but he's my boss in most places except this, I guess. But we're just going to talk to him about you know, do we have so many good players we need to have two A teams or can we just do one A team, you know, which would be my preference. So we have had to do two A teams in the past for some grades, but uh, we're kind of looking at it as one A team and two Bs is what I think. So, okay. Yeah, sounds good. All right. Thank you. Yep. Thanks. No, I don't think are you still on here? Yep. Do you need anything? You got a question for me? Or does Josh, you got a question? Yeah, do you want to go first? Yeah, I just, uh, Kevin, I don't think you've shared any of those documents with me that you were going over today. Oh. So if you can share those with me. Yeah, I thought I sent that to you, no? I went through, I pulled out my computer. I don't see any of it. Josh Miller, agenda, parent meeting. Plain schedule time. matrix schedule i think i thought i did that one with uh i did that one with joshua miller dr one but i'll do it right now and then i don't know about any specific five six rule i don't even know do they play 11 v 11 or 9 v 9 or it's 8 v 8 um they will send a, there will be a date in your calendar for like a coaches meeting. That's like on Zoom. Okay. And so there's also like, you know, the rules on the website. I can send a link to that too. I kind of forget that people don't know the rules. It's AV8. Okay. So. Yeah. Sounds good. I got the uh, schedule grid now, so. Yeah, got that for you. I'll send the other things your way. Okay. Okay? Sounds good. Thanks, ma'am. All right, I'll talk to you soon. Thanks. Sounds yep. See you, buddy. Bye-bye.
All right. Um, so I was just wondering, could you send me um, the team snap thing? I don't know how that works or just like an invitation to that um, whenever you can. Team. Which team um, is Allie? Yeah. Remember? Should, I just, should I just text Allie about that or like how do you need to send that to me? No, uh, you're you're the white team. You're white. White? Okay. I don't know if I'm add you to that a minute. Okay, because I don't know if I'm doing that, like with like being just assistant. Like I don't know. Yeah, that'll be something that you guys can talk about. My my thought is that likely you will she'll she'll want to do like the email communication. Yeah, for sure. Adding that stuff. And that likely you'll be somebody that helps at practices and matches and is in a, you know, really in a support role for helping kids develop skills and, and things like that, while she kind of guides the main direction of the team. Yeah, for sure. That's perfect. That's you're right, so you're going to be on the white team? Yeah, that's perfect. The other thing that I was wondering about, so my sister is playing. What's mm -hmm. the, like, what's your feel on, like, the dynamic with that? Like, would I be able to have her on? the white team or like do you have any most definitely yeah okay okay that's perfect. definitely what we want so like she's awesome. gonna be on your team okay awesome perfect and just let Allie know like hey it's my sister you know it's, it's Kevin said it's cool that we have her on our team so if she's like the best player in the grade well then we got to take that into account right but right and it's got to be even is that what it is in sixth grade yeah equal yep okay, sweet. You, just have to, you know as you make teams amongst those three teams I mean to be honest sixth grade is probably going to lose a lot because they had three teams last year and they weren't that great. Um, and splitting into three again is tough. Yeah. It's equal, especially as teams get better. So seventh grade, they'll start to get like more winning successful because we'll go A and B. And, you know, instead of three equal teams, the, the kids will start to shift towards a more competitive environment. But yeah. it's just about having fun and learning and giving kids reps. Yeah. And make sure they know it's not the end of the world if they don't win every game, you know? Yeah. What are you, 24 Vister EM? Yeah, yep, yeah, exactly. Okay. Did you get? Um... I think I got most everything else. If not, I'll text you. Um, I was looking through and I think you gave me everything. Did I give you the practice grid? I don't think you did, actually. I might not have just because I didn't think you that would be like your responsibility to manage that. Yeah. Grid. So that might be why I didn't give it to you, but I'm going to give it to you anyway. Okay. So you can see it and, um, you know. I think I had one more. I don't even. Did somebody just join the meeting? Oh, um. Okay. Actually, you know what? Now that I'm here, um, I was going to talk to you something about Eagle Nation. This is like completely different. Sure. Um. Okay. So I was talking to um, Jackson Midling. And he was super um, interested in um, not, so we were talking about like not having him be like at the meetings and something or like having people that are like that uh, helping with crowds. Is that something that like I can tell him he can go along with? For sure. Okay. I and think, then who's our crowd leaders again that are coming it's to meet? Like, it's like Ethan, Willem, Will um, for seniors and then like uh josh brody jake for juniors or something okay so we'll want to just talk to them about like hey here's some other people that yeah know, are probably going to be helpful crowd leaders okay. even though they don't they're not going to come to meetings so we want to like at, at games don't be like power struggling like we're yeah. right go talk to them now about hey we want to work with you I know you don't you don't want to come to all the meetings and stuff, but yeah, you're gonna be a major influencer. Let's work together. We'll have fun doing this together, kind of thing. Yeah, for sure. So it's not like this, like you know, like Cooper last year was kind of like under the radar, like doing stuff. Yeah, you want to involve them without like making them come to everything. Yeah. Um. So I was also I thinking think about that's like John too. Yeah, that's exactly. I think so. He want he actually said something about it. And um, it seems like he was talking to you or something. He was but in my office the other day about it. Yeah. 
um he was like in the original people we wanted to so it was like he was and, and if he wants to come to meetings he's i mean he's a very good leader and he's a very upstanding individual <laughs> i mean he's not gonna hurt anything i just he, don't know that he can be at a lot of stuff because he's yeah, he's always doing something yeah like, whether it's golf basketball or soccer the only thing you can really go to is um football yeah because basketball he's going to be on the team probably right he could be the same thing as like jackson with just like being a part of it kind of but not yeah, really giving them the microphone to do some stuff and right, right you know letting them run the run the flags or yeah yeah, yeah. you know like like we want you to be a part we want you in front um yeah. and working with us you know Sure. But I, just, I mean, maybe he wants to do the meetings. Maybe he's really passionate about that. Yeah, I just don't think he even knows what is really going on. So I think he's just saying that. But I think that's a good idea. Let's just. But I said to him, I think the only thing you can go to is like our four home football games or like some of the away games. He's like, yeah. yeah. He's like, I still want to do it. Like, I think it's cool. I'm like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> he can, yeah, he can be part of it. But I mean, I was also thinking um, Andrew Scapel. He's like loud and stuff at games. So I was thinking I could talk to him about that too. I'm yeah, just sure. I think it's all good. I mean, it's mostly like those. John as a junior is kind of a special one that I think he actually could stand out as a junior. Mm -hmm. Or those other people are seniors. Yeah. So they're right. naturally going to get followed more, right? Sure. So Andrew and Jackson are probably the most important to you know, make sure that we rope them in. Yeah, for sure. We're like Brody and those guys, they're not going to be a major factor, but they're going to be a big part of watching and learning right. what it takes. And we can hopefully get them to do some things along yeah. the way. Uh, yeah, I'll just talk to them and see about it. Because I think that yeah. they could be excited if they were like a part of it, then they would be more like positive. Well, let's be honest. Those two guys don't want to come to the meetings anyway yeah exactly no. <laughs> they don't they don't want to plan they don't want to deal with the consequences of challenges or yeah they don't so let's no. keep them involved but keep them where they want to be which For is sure. just in those yeah. so what, what prompted my uh communication today was mr vanderwerf came and asked me about you know how last year we went in front of um community time to talk about hey here's where you oh. go you you know, freshmen are going to find this person up at the top. Oh, yeah, yeah. Or we meet here and then we do all of our painting here. And totally. So we were able to do that last year because our first football game was away. Oh, okay. So yeah. The community time on like the 30th of August because our next game is the 31st. But this year, our first game is home and we can't get in front of so community be time that quickly right what he said was he would like for us to make a three minute video okay of hey this is how you connect to us to hey first game is tomorrow here's some things you need to know right like you need to know that you know we, we all do a theme every time you know and in that theme you know, you come down and we have paint. We bring all the paint. No, do not bring paint. Like we bring paint. Right, all the same. Put in this location. And this is where we meet. And then we go on the field and we do this. And if like you have pictures of that from like, yeah. we can splice that in. But we need to make a video that's three minutes long that he's going to have all of the small group leaders show their group. Oh, that's actually perfect. So easier than community time too. Yeah, in some ways, right? I mean, we have to spend time making a video. Yeah, yeah true. Sure. <laughs> community time, we just walk up there and do it and it's done. Yeah. So it's 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 good and bad, but it's different for sure. So that's why I wanted us to like get ahead of that. Like if we were able to meet like Friday at some point or next week before school starts, that would give us a full like 10 days. Yeah. To make um, sure that we had content and somebody could put the video together. Who's our video people? Do you remember? Yeah. So um we so we kind of like have Hallie for that, but I don't know how good she's like gonna be able to do that. We can kind of all do it together. 
Um, I, so I was thinking um, Tuesday. So a lot of us are helping at the freshman orientation um, for like student Congress, NHS hours and stuff. Um, so we can just do it after that at like. Yeah. So send me the time for that. Okay. I'll send out an email tonight to like a bunch of people just like starting a thread. Um, yep. Just saying all that stuff. Do you want me to talk about the video? Or Tell should we... that we need to do our first meeting that we have some membership things to discuss. Okay. Also, we have an assignment that we have to create a video about the first football game. Okay. We have to do it pretty quickly. So we need to meet on, what would you say, Tuesday? Yeah, I'll send a time and stuff. Okay, I, I will look a minute, Emma, at, yeah. at our, our facility schedule to see if, so that's 15th, freshman launch is 8 a.m. to 11.30 is what I have. Yeah, so we could do any time after that, honestly. So soccer practices at night. Okay, so we could have. Which is great. It's football. Uh, football is three to six. Okay. One is volleyball. Volleyball is 12.30 to 2.30. So that's the hard one. Okay. Um, that would be Hannah and Maddie would be able to not go. So we could, so we do, could do, what if we did 11.45? 11 11.45 to 12.15. Yeah. I feel like that, that's plenty of time. It should be enough time for us to have that discussion and give some assignments. The other thing we have to remember is we got to make the the uh, football theme paper. Yeah. Um, so I was talking to Olivia about that because she has all the like paper and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I can grab that from her. Um, we just have to like finalize themes. Do you want me to send you the themes to finalize? We have them all figured out. Yeah, send it to me and I'll review it so that okay. I, we can make it a quick discussion on Tuesday in our short meeting. Yeah. I think the best um, thing we can do there is like, here's what we're thinking about for these people. Here's how we need to work with them. Two, theme paper. These are the themes that we have to change or whatever, and then make the paper. Who's going to do that? And then three, we have this video and we spend most of our time on the video. Yeah. About it so that you guys can go make it. Me and, um, yeah, that's perfect. Me and Hannah can do, I was thinking we could make the like themes right before, um, like next weekend. So they have a week to figure it out, get stuff. Yeah. Um, cause like freshman is going to want to have it for a little bit like know what the theme is so yeah. you don't just throw it up like a couple of days before if we can put it up i mean it'd be great to have it up for freshman launch but yeah do you, I, I mean, mean that's that is possible if I, you send me the themes and then i just approve it you guys could do it this weekend do it this weekend do you want me to just, i'll send it to you right now yeah. um and if if they're good there's a couple questionable that you might one change. is obviously usa we, yeah I go to Mr. Mockaby about, there's you know. one that's they i think they were talking about doing like frat out or like country club which that is kind of like you don't i don't really know about that one yeah well, let's see just just send it to me and i'll check it out okay um and if that's good then we can make it this weekend and try to get it up mm -hmm. yeah because we'll all be there early in the morning anyway so i can just put it up okay in the same spot yeah yeah. Uh, yeah i'll send it to you i gotta find it okay well thanks for getting that started i realized i didn't have a text chain in my in my text app you know with everybody on it i had yeah, yeah. last year's i think because it still had jake eaton on there oh yeah so i think it we need a new one that's like eagle nation 24 okay sweet so it's easy for me to find and be able to send notices out about stuff so yeah perfect Okay, I'll do that tonight and I'll send you all that stuff. Okay, I will I will send put me on that email as well when you send okay. it. Okay. Yeah, um, sounds good. Today. Um but yeah, thanks a lot. I'm excited for you to do volleyball. I think you're gonna have a lot of fun. Uh, I'm excited too. It'll be super on the coach side too, you know. Yeah. I started as an assistant coach and it's great. You're everybody's hero, right? You get to, oh, to, play, you don't get to make any choices, you just get to help. Yeah and have fun and you're going to love it. So exactly. That's perfect. I'm, I'm excited. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Yeah. This thank you for being here. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you. I'll send you all that stuff tonight. Okay. Thanks. See you. Right. See you. Bye.